I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? is looking for a place to call home. The guy is a maniac. Just for a few hours. I'm getting really angry. Desperate Hours, now on video cassette and Laserdisc. Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time for Wes. Thank you so much for that. If anyone's interested in requesting any other type of videos or topics or random stuff, lists, reviews, could be any type of video, feel free. You just send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now this is a review for a film that I honestly did not think I would rant on. Because I looked at the cast. I looked at the director, Michael Cimino. He did The Deer Hunter. Yes, he did Heaven's Gate. But Heaven's Gate, for its running time, at least it's a well-directed, beautiful-looking movie. Very, very pretentious, but... This, it's badly edited. The performances are overwrought, over the top. A bunch of people fucking screaming all the time. Sometimes, a lot of times, fucking randomly. When I say editing, I'll, I'll tell you, there's a point where a character is looking over here, and then that shot, he's looking over here. I'll get to that in a minute. And a waste of a cast. I mean, Mickey Rourke, Anthony Hopkins, Elias Coteas, who played Casey Jones in the 1990 Ninja Turtles film, Kelly Lynch. David Morse, Shawnee Smith, who was in the Blob remake. I mean, this is a pretty capable actors. I mean, the fact that Anthony Hopkins and Mickey Ward together, pretty good. But there, there's stuff that either doesn't make sense, is poorly edited. Okay, I, I mentioned the poorly, so I don't forget. There's a point where Mickey Ward wants this uh, wallet. Anthony Hopkins gives up his wallet to Mickey Ward. Mickey Ward takes it, throws it back to Mealy. And He's looking over here at Mickey Wark. The next shot, he's over here looking at his wife, played by Mimi Rogers. So in the split second, we go from here to here. Well, I imagine I'm talking, and all of a sudden I edit, and I'm over here. You'd be like, what the fuck? It's Allie. And cinematography-wise, look-wise, those other films he's directed, they do showcase a good-looking film. A well, this could be directed by anybody. There's nothing in this movie, uh, angle-wise, camera-wise, shot-wise, that deems anyone but an amateur made this movie. And when I say stuff that doesn't make sense, Kelly Lynch is a DA 
who somehow hid a fucking gun between her fucking legs. Do you know all courtroom, they don't, you know, pat people down to make sure they don't have a fucking gun? I would think so, but no. The d She's a DA. Mitty works on trial. I'm going to talk to my client. They're sitting. He grabs a gun between her legs. And no, it's not but her cooch, but might as fucking well be. And Kelly Lynch, there it's like she's into Mitty Ward, but then she's always scared of Mitty Ward. Like throughout the scene, I couldn't tell if she was trying to act like she's scared of Mitty Ward or she was really scared of Mitty Ward, but she's the one who brought the gun and she's really into Mitty Ward, but then she maybe she's acting scared, but even when no one's around, like there's a quick bit where he almost like rapes her as they're making their escape. And she still seems scared. You would think she'd be like turned on, smiling. To, if, no, now she's like, Ooh. I'm like, lady, which are you, man? Are you scared of him? Or are you really into him? I don't fucking know. They escape, or he escapes. His brother's played by Elias Coteas, driving the car. They have this big guy, David Morse. David Morse, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in. He was the bad guy in Disturbia. And he was in The Negotiator. He, he's been in a lot of stuff. If you look up him, his name, you see his face. Like, okay, I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. And just... They put this car in the water. And Elias Cote... Like, you have this goofy music. A lot of times the score is not appropriate for what's going on screen. And Elias Cotillas jumps the, the car to get rid of it into the water. And he gets up top and he jumps goofily. And the music's like goofy for some reason. And so the three decide to find a house and sit there until Kelly Lynch reaches them. Which I'm thinking, why don't you... Why didn't you tell her beforehand, meet us here... That's, again, that's another thing I don't understand. You're with Kelly Lynch, the DA. There's many times you could talk to her. Why don't you pick our location? Okay, when we escape, meet us at this location. See you there. Meet us at, name a town, name a motel. That'd be easy to fucking plan. Here's a reservation for this motel in Bumfuck, Arizona. Okay, Kelly Lynch, when I leave, go to Bumfuck, Arizona. Okay. Why they didn't think about that, I don't fucking know. Because there wouldn't be a fucking movie, I guess. Just a bunch of fucking stupidity. It was badly directed. It was badly edited. I keep harping on that. Because there's a... Or there's a moment where... Mitty Work is saying, I promise. As soon as he says that... Boom, it immediately cuts to like an outside, like helicopter shot. Like, bef it almost cuts him off. It almost cuts him off. Where Mickey Work is talking, the split second the word leaves his mouth, it immediately cuts to another outside shot. Like, wow, they almost cut him off. Or there's a point where he tits Anthony Hopkins. As soon as he tits Anthony Hopkins in the stomach, ooh, boom, it cuts to cops by Chopper. Very awkward editing in this movie. So Anthony Hopkins, he is having problems with his marriage because he cheated. His wife, Mimi Rogers, older daughter, Shawnee Smith. They have a younger, uh, also a, a little boy. And this movie is the most scream cringe movie I've seen in a while. Where people will just randomly scream and shout for no reason. Mimi Rogers, she'll just... Ah, ah, ah. Anthony Hopkins... Ah. Get up, bed, go upstairs. Just, just everybody, I guess they think that's the tension, the intensity that should be portrayed in this kidnapping, home invasion, this type of plot. But it doesn't. It doesn't in this case. It should. And it could. This is a remake of a Humphrey Bogart film, which I haven't seen from the 1950s. 
I didn't haven't seen it. So I put a little bit of light into this. I, I think 1955. And this came out in 1990. But yeah. And the performances are bad in my opinion. Mitty Ward, Anthony Hopkins just either going over the top or just... I don't know what the fuck happened. Okay, when I say the yelling, uh, when the three bad guys enter, they got Mimi Rogers, Eddie Hopkins is coming by, come on, open up. I was waiting in line for two days! And he just randomly yells that out. And soon after is when they did Anthony Hopkins sit him down. That's the same time where he throws the wallet, Mitty Ward throws him back, he's looking over here, the next shot, he's looking over here. And it seems like Anthony Hopkins, every scene, he's like, He has this look on his face. Even when he's looking at his wife, he's like... Do you think you're Hannibal Lecter in this movie? Hannibal Lecter was less intense than this character. When everyone's just randomly yelling, that doesn't automatically equal tension. That doesn't automatically equal uh, excitement or... Ooh, what's going to happen next? This one almost goofy scene where the kid runs home. He doesn't notice anything. He immediately... I don't know if he had this Nintendo pause the whole time. Just boom. He immediately turns it on and immediately he's playing. Not the opening screen. Start. No, immediately. Poop. He's in the middle of a boxing match. <coughs> and I think he's... I don't even think it's the first guy you fight. I'm like, so did he have the game pause the whole time? Or people here don't know how the fuck Nintendo works. So I didn't. Either the kid had... He, he had to pause the entire fucking time and... Oh, you, maybe if you establish that, that he's playing and then he paused it, I'll do it later and then come back. But, uh, whatever. It's a little detail, but it's like, what the fuck? And, like, David Morris is helping him how to play. <coughs> oh, more of the editing. They're having this dinner. Boom, immediately, Anthony Hopkins drops a knife. And then Mickey Ward's like, oh, yeah, you want that knife, huh? Almost stabs in his hand. But it happens so immediately, you don't know if it was an accident, or you don't know if he maybe was trying to use the knife, or tried to hide it. The way you would do this scene normally, you're in the dinner scene, Anthony looks and there's a knife, and he looks back, and maybe he sees Mickey Ward talking, he moves his hand a little bit, maybe he stops, you know, when Mickey Ward looks at him, he's looking more and more, is he going to get the knife, is he not going to get the knife, oh, he's maybe he's getting the knife, is he going to be successful? That's what building suspense, that's what building tension does. And this didn't have that. It just boom, immediately the knife drops. It looked like an accident. But, the, you know, Mickey Ward said, you tried to do that on purpose. Like, what, he tried to drop the knife on purpose? Oh, he tried to grab it? I don't know, I didn't see him try to grab it. I just see the knife fucking drop. It was like the middle section's cut out. And it says on trivia, apparently, a lot I guess, stuff was cut out. Which hurt the film tremendously. Shawnee Smith comes home. There's more screaming. There's more yelling. At one point, Shawnee Smith goes, They're fucking idiots. Then David Morse tries to bear hug Hopkins to death. Then at one point, uh, Anthony Hopkins is stabbed, and then Mickey Ward is kidding the shit out of David Morse. I don't know why he's kidding the shit out of David Morse. He doesn't care about these other people. It just, the movie feels messy. It feels like people stream whatever the fuck they want to. Uh, sometimes they'll cut out to Lindsay Krause, who's this FBI, with a bad southern accent. Trying to be a southern dial. We're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. Just, 
didn't care for that character. She just got on my nerves with her fake ass fuck accent. And I like the actress. I don't know why they had to give her a stupid fucking accent. This seems like a movie where people... Is every character on cocaine in this movie? With the way they act? Is everyone cocaine? Like they're talking, and then all of a sudden they're yelling. Then they're talking to me. If everyone was on cocaine, it would make more sense. Made more fucking sense. <laughs> the the they tell David uh, he tells David Mo but okay some guy arrives they bring him in Mickey Ward shoots him with a pillow to muffle it tells David Morris to get rid of the body and also goes if you want to leave go ahead so he does then he gets his car. David Morris drives somewhere to drop the dump the body. His car gets stuck. He walks around. Cops find him, and he gets shot to shit. I mean, fucking Robocop Ed Two Hundred Nine type of getting shot to shit. Somehow I forget how the fuck they. Oh, cause they get Tilly Lynch. They get her to help them. So Tilly Lynch gets there. The cops are there in surveillance. At one point, Shawnee Smith's boyfriend comes by, and they let Shawnee Smith go. Granted, they say, if you say anything, I'll kill your dad. But you're still letting her go. I mean... <laughs> you let her go out with her boyfriend while you're supposed to have her hostage. The thing that didn't make sense to me... Why didn't you pull the boyfriend in and shoot him? You've done it before. There's another guy you let in and shot him with a fucking gun to the pillow. Why don't you do it with him too? Also, now that Kelly Lynch is there and no one supposedly knows where you're at. Why don't you just shoot everybody and leave with Kelly Lynch? Why do you now want a hostage? No one supposedly knows where the fuck you're at. I thought the whole point was you're here to wait for Kelly Lynch. She has arrived. Now you want a hostage. And if you want a hostage, why would you take Anthony Hopkins? Why don't you take the little kid? Which, at one point, he goes to bed. He never pops up for the rest of the movie. It got to a point I went, where the fuck is the kid? Wait. This whole time, including the big shootout where Elias Totis just shot the shit, and then helicopters are around and then Mickey Ward gets shot outside you tell me the little kid is still sleeping upstairs in the fucking house I didn't for a minute I'm like wait a minute where the fuck is the kid oh I guess he's still sleeping <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I guess when he went to bed he really did go to bed for the rest of the fucking movie And I, I mean, the, the fact that the FBI, some of their tactics are pretty shitty. That could easily gotten everyone killed. The the fact that I don't know. I just I didn't care about this movie at all. Uh, the editing is poor. The acting is over the top and just people screaming. I got tired of it. Just random screaming, yelling. It just felt like a messy movie. The way it's directed, the way it's filmed. It just, this seems like a movie that should be a, a pressure cooker. Building up, building up, building up to intense moments. You have the cast for it. You wasted it. Maybe Michael Cimino... This is a guy who's full of himself and was not as talented as he made himself out to be. Maybe the editing did fuck it up. Because editing is an important part of this kind of movie. But also, but the way the actors are directed by Chimino, that didn't help matters either. If you took this and maybe if you had a different director. I mean... John Carpenter, to see him do something different, 
And that's a guy that knows how to utilize tension and actors by how he utilized Donald Pleasance and Halloween, Prince of Darkness, you know, others. It'd be something different for him to do. I mean, I'm trying to think like other directors in this time period could have done it. But I, for a movie called Desperate Hours, I didn't feel any desperation other than I'm desperate for this film to fucking stop. So yeah, I, I thought this film was fucking awful and a waste of a talented cast. But it's just a very messy movie. Uh, it's it's hard to quantify that in words, but it just... That's just, anyway. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.